Hello everybody and welcome back to day four of English National Ballet's youth dance course. Today we are joined by dance artist, teacher and choreographer Louise Bennett. She's going to be teaching an intermediate class and then she's going to be guiding us through her creative practice as a choreographer with some tips for you to try at home during lockdown. So as of always, remember to practice safely at home. So be aware of the space that you're in and make sure that the clothes you're wearing are suitable for movement today. And also feel free to adapt the material where necessary if you need. These videos, of course, are available to watch again and again on Facebook and YouTube. So feel free to drop in anytime. So without further ado, handing over to Louise. Thank you, Louise. Thank you, Richard. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Louise. Um, I really, really hope you've been enjoying the classes this week that Richard has organised for you. And I'm very, very happy to be here to lead today's session. Welcome to my kitchen. Uh, let's make a start. We'll start with plies. So, uh, nice big second position. We're going to start, sweep the arm across to first for a demi plie. And uh, another one, sweeping the arm to fifth. Grand plie, five, six, seven, eight. Pour de bras towards the bar, one, two, three, four, away from the bar, five, six, seven, eight. Same again, two demis, one, two, three, four, grand plie, five, six, seven, eight, towards the bar, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, first position, eight, heels all the way together. Really shoulders down, but nice and free in that arm, grand plie, five, six, seven, eight, all the way forward. I have an old back injury uh, from my performing career, so I'm going to stay up here, but you go all the way forward. Stand up. Uh, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four. Grand plie. Five, six, seven, eight. Uh, up to a rise. One, two, three, four. On five and six, you're just going to resist down, make the heels kiss, and round you go. Five, six, seven, eight. And, and then we do everything on the other side and you can take a nice long rise and balance at the end. So two demi plies, one grand plie, two quarter bras, twice in second, one and a half times in first. We take a rise and round you go. Here we go, a nice big second position. Spread the feet on the floor, shoulders down, sweep the arm across. Thank you. 
prepare the arm to second. Take the feet to parallel on one, trying to really zip up that space between the calves and the inside thighs. Then you're just gonna push the heels together and no wiggling in the hips, just find your first position. Plie and zip up the inside thighs to stand up. We go through the foot, six, seven, eight. Turn to your front and close. One with the inside leg and you close. Turn to your front, plie, rond and you close. You're just gonna do the same thing three times, going all the way around. Parallel, push the heels together to turn out. Plie, stand up. Through the foot, really think about your jumps, maybe your point work, if you do point work. Think about the alignment of that foot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One more time. One, two, three, four. Keep those hips nice and square, so really find that hinge in that hip. So we don't do that one, we really find that one. Six, seven, eight, to the back, close, inside leg, close, back, plie, run, close, we take one more rise, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, round you go to the other side, five, six, seven, eight, and you don't need to do a soutenu there or anything like that, you can just turn round however you want to the other side. I hope that's clear, parallel, turn it out, plie, through the foot, Tonju, tonju. Straight legs, send the foot far away from you for a plie, quarter rond, and you close. Same thing side to back, same thing back to side. Take a rise, and we'll go around to the other side. Here we go. First position, nice and tall. and you go around to the other side. If you want to challenge your balance, what I think is quite a nice thing to do is to just turn to the other side where you are. So don't put the hand down. Keep the arms in fifth 
and just really turn on top of your feet. So something that I'm really interested in is the way we close in fifth. And this is an exercise where you close and you change legs quite a lot. So I want to see, if I could see you, that fifth where you're gonna change legs. Try to find that fifth every single time you close. So we don't do that fake one where we're bunching up and not putting the weight down in fifth. So every time you close, if I pause the video, <laughs> should be able to see two feet down in fifth with weight on them. And that really helps you to uh, not grip in the hip flexor. Also it means every time you close, the brain knows to put two feet down and then you could go anywhere. So when you get to choreography later on, you can change legs very, very easily and you always know exactly where your weight is. Um, enough of that chat, let's do the exercise. One and two, to the front, to the back, to the side, a rond and a cloche. Reverse it, point a breath forward and back, take a rise and balance, and we go around to the other side. Here we go, praying the arm to fifth. One time two, and two time twos. So we're going to go jeté front on one, a nice light pique on two, coup de pied three, prop fifth on four. You're going to do that front side and back. Five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, three, clash with the inside leg, front, back, front, close. Just keep the arm in second the whole time, nice and strong. Don't forget about that arm, really keep that elbow supported and the shoulder down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Same thing to the front, five, six, seven, eight. We're gonna do one of my favorite things to do uh, in class, which is three little fondues all the way around. Five, six, seven, eight. Just with the foot on the floor, just really find that supporting leg and the working leg really far away from you. Bring it up to fifth. You've got 16 counts to do a coup de pied and get round to the other side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you have one, two, three, four. Really use the floor. Now, PK, very important to use the lower abs to control. It's the same as when you do your Pilates, um, which I'm sure you've all done before, probably even this week. Um, you use the abs to really control the movement of the leg. So try to find that same feeling here uh, so we don't do it with the hip flexor. Lower abs really, really working. So you do your ha uh ha, -huh, all of that, all the way around, and then you have three clush with the inside leg. Put the weight down so that you can change legs very easily. Same thing, reversed. Ha 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 ha. Five, six, seven, eight. Now these little fondues, I always say to my students, no samba. So we don't do anything like that in those little fondues. You find the hinge in two hips, you send the tailbone straight down, relax the front of the supporting ankle, and send your working leg far away from you two feet to close, like a cabriole. Yeah, all the way around. Ha, ha. One, two, three, four, six, seven, up to fifth. Find your coup de pied. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four. Round you go, five, six, seven, eight. I hope that's nice and clear. Here we go, just preparing the arm to second. 
out, pique, enclave, close. Imagine you're in a much bigger space than you are. Uh, seven, uh, eight, two transfers. We're going three fourths. One, uh, two, cloche. Very tall on the hips for cloche. Really use the floor. We just go to the front. Any height, anything from just off the floor to 180 or anything in between. Uh, three, four, five, six. One very gentle jeté, and we reverse. One. Two, two runs, three. Really use the floor, and that last bit, the toes give you the momentum for the run. Five, six, seven, uh, eight. Second time you step forwards and backwards into arabesque, into passe, to the front, really tall for a tondu. Really don't miss that part out. Really, really tall. One jeté, and let's go straight round to the other side. Um, because it's just a short class. So straight round to the other side for one on plie, two runs, one on plie, two runs, two transfers. So you go backwards first, which feels a bit strange, but that's what we're doing. Backwards and forwards, cloche to the front, passe. Really take care not to do this one into arabesque. Keep that supporting hip really over the foot. Really, really tall for a tonju, one jeté. And we go straight round to the other side. I might have to modify a bit on the second side because of my my space, but I'm sure you know the exercise. Let's uh, let's go for it. Classic tune for this one. Try to find that freedom in the upper body. Really turn the head. Two runs. Find that opposition. Ready to step backwards. Thank you. 
pieces. There we go, that's better. Okay, let's do a fun dew. If you want to have a stretch while I'm setting the fun dew, uh, this is a good moment to do that. So we're going to do fun dew and adage sort of combined today. So, five, six, seven, eight. Fun dew to the front, just 45 degrees. Fun dew and close. And then just take a devope to the front, uh, seven, uh, eight. We're going to do exactly the same to the back. One, two, really tall for tonju and close. Ten repé, six, seven, eight. Same thing to the side. One, two, three, four. Ten repé, six, seven, eight. Up to fifth, and I'm very keen that the weight goes onto two feet in this fifth, so we don't immediately send ourselves kind of back, anticipating picking the foot up. So find a really solid fifth on two feet. And then that thing we spoke about, about using the lower abs, really, really keep the hips square. Use the lower abs to lift the foot underneath you to passe. Lots of work in the lower abs. Try to take the tension out of the neck. Really find that passe. And then we go around to the other side. So quite straightforward. You've got one fondue to the front, tondue and close, dev, le pay, and you close. Same thing to the back on the fondue, so the arms go to second. And in the devil pace, they go to your big positions, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, devil pay, six, seven, eight. Up to fifth, up to passe, three, four, five, six. And you go around to the other side, seven, eight. I hope that's nice and clear. So again, just really finding the hinge in the ankles, knees, and hips. Because if you keep tension in the ankles, knees, and hips, it's very difficult to do a plie. But find the hinge and then push into the floor and then really proud with the upper body. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Front, back and side. Fifth position. Ready for fondue front? now. So we're going to do two to the front, two to the side, one en croix, and then my favourite thing to do in frappe, which is a balance in second position. So I'm very keen on um, leaving the bar enough at the bar to know that we're on our legs. Uh, and I'll explain that in a minute. Two to the front, so five, six, seven, eight, two to the front, two to the side, one en croix, a six, a seven, and eight. One count down into second position, go for it. One count up. Woo! Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, one en croix, six, seven, eight. Same again. One count in second, one count up to releve. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. On the end, you're going to do a double and a pique en croix. So a double. Here's where you use those lower abs again, so that you really control. 
the action that you're doing, but that you can be nice and free on top. So you don't want to take the tension of the frappe into the shoulders and the neck. Shoulders really down, but this bit should be nice and relaxed. You're going to need that in the centre. Uh, front and a pique, side and a pique, back and a pique, side and a pique. Change legs. Eight counts for petty back one. Towards the to the bar. Five, six, seven, eight. Attitude balance, uh, as high as you want. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's do Alan J. One, two, three, four. Turning round. Five, six, seven, eight. And you do everything on the other side. So, remember that frappe has a little hold. Frappe is always quick. Doesn't matter what the tempo is, it's always a quick frappe and a hold for whatever amount of time you have. So even if the music was very, very slow, you'd still do it quickly and hold. This one isn't that slow, actually, so it will be all right. But just get going on that frappe quick. One, two, three, four, one on quoi, five, six, seven, eight. Here, it's that thing about the tension in the ankles. Really try to relax the ankles. Spread the foot on the floor, although you're very held in the abs, the pelvic floor, the back, all of that stuff, and your knees are really over your toes. Push the feet into the floor, keep the ribs nice and closed, and go for the balance. It's much more useful to go one, two, and fall over than to spend half an hour down here and balance for about half a second. <laughs> um, so really go for it. You've got lots of chances of that balance, so treat it as an investigation. If it goes wrong the first time, what happened? Did I need to close my ribs? Did I need to relax in the neck? Did I send my arms far behind me? That's one that we all do at some point, so really close the ribs, bring the arms in front of you enough that you can uh, keep your posture. Hamstrings, inside thighs, working a lot. Then you reverse, two to the back, two to the side, one on quoi. Balance in second. You've got a double and a pique, you do that all the way around on quoi. Change legs, really get this hamstring going because you're about to do a balance there. That's eight counts, eight counts here. Then you have allonge, one, two, three, four. Round to the other side and you prepare. I hope that's all clear. Mm. Preparing to second position, on your second, two front, two side, one on quoi. This introduction, you wait a long time for it, and then it's quite short, <laughs> so be ready. Here we go. Six, seven, eight. One and quarter. Ready for a balance in second? So we'll do just a grand back one to finish off. Uh, so if you want to have a quick stretch now, um, safely, that would be a good time to do it. Two to the front. One, two, three, four. Really thinking about how you close. So for me, I find it very unhealthy to do this one where you, uh, I already feel it in my, <laughs> my hip flexor. So make sure you establish a proper fifth every time you close. I promise you it will help you move around quickly once you 
get into the centre and once, especially once you get into doing different choreography. If you are able to put the weight down on two feet and change legs effectively, it makes life so much easier, I promise. Two to the front, one, two, three, four, two to the side, five, six, seven, eight, two to the back with the other leg, so complete the encore with the other leg. You're just going to do front, back, plie, stand up, and reverse. One, two, three, four, two to the side, six, seven, eight, two to the front with the other leg, back, front, plie, stand up. We're going to do an ending. We'll do one, two, three, four, panche, five, six, seven, eight. Stay there if you wish, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you've got 16 counts to do a panche. Then you can have 16 counts to do a stretch or a balance of choice before we go to the other side. So you could do a passe, you could do an attitude, you could shoulder the leg. If you're stretching, just make sure you do it safely. Uh, you can do another attitude. Or you can just have a rest, which is probably what I'll do, and have a drink of water. Mm, so you've got 16. So two to the front, one, two, three, four. Two to the side, five, six, seven, eight. Two to the back with the other leg. Front, back, plie, stand up. Two to the back, two to the side. Two to the front with the other leg. Five, six, seven, eight. Take 16 counts to find your way into a punche and stand up. 16 counts for a free stretch or balance. And then we go around to the other side. So grand back mom. Uh, what other steps do you think you can find inside a grand Batman? Um If you were in the studio with me, I would, I would wait for an answer. But I'll tell you, inside every grand Batman, if I filmed you in slow motion, I should be able to find a tonju, and I should be able to find a jeté on the way up and on the way down, every single time. So we don't do that one where we just throw the leg. We do throw the leg, but even before you leave fifth position, you push down into the floor. And I should be able to find that tondu and jeté there every time, and the fifth. Okay, enough chat from me. Let's have a go at the exercise. Two front, two side, two back with the other leg. Gosh. Um, I think what we're going to do is do just maybe two exercises in the centre, so a pour de bras, adage thing, and a tondu with a pirouette, um, just so we've come away from the bar a little bit and stood on top of our legs in the centre, and then we'll have a bit of a chat about the creative process. So, um, let's start, have a little stretch, have a drink of water, and I will set the pour de bras. Um, so we're going to start with a tondu to the front, 
on a plie. So, starting quasi. Go this way. There we go. Front on a plie. Stand up. Same thing to the back. And stand up. This time you have low arm. Take it into a rond as you stand up and just find your arabesque any height. Doesn't need to be high. Seven and eight. Plie. Pied de bray. Now, anything between a big step to fifth or just a rise to fifth. Totally dependent on your space. Um, I might do just a, a little step up to fifth, but if we were in a studio with lots of space, I'd always say step beyond the foot. So if you can, do that. Otherwise, adapt to your space. You go fifth, lower on fast. You're just gonna take passe, stand there for four counts, really establish that passe, five, six, seven, eight. That's it, same on the other side. One, two, to the back, three, Find your arabesque, plie, pas de bray. Step up to fifth and come down, five, six, seven, eight. Mm. We won't stop, but we'll do it again straight away, just a little bit off the floor. So, this one a little bit off the floor, that one a little bit off the floor, this run, this is the tricky part. So, a little bit off the floor, and then what you're gonna think is that this inside thigh, uh, actions its way forward in opposition to the leg that's going round. So you're almost feeling like you're doing that rond with two legs. Otherwise sometimes what can happen is we swing ourselves away from that leg. So really think this inside thigh working forward as you stand up and that should really bring you on top of your leg. Uh, five, six, and then just really see if you can find a way once you're in that position to make it expand even more. Uh, so reaching far away from you, but what I like to think is that the reaching happens from the, the sternum. So you have some kind of imagination um, in that position. So see how you can play with that feeling of reaching far away from you. Mm, then you have plie, pas de stepping up to fifth. Second time, we'll do développé second with the arms in fifth. Five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, just off the floor, six. Find your arabesque, seven, eight. You can take the leg higher there if you wish, the second time. Pas de bray, up to fifth. Devil pay second, five, six, seven, eight. Hope right, that's clear. So you've got tonnage to the front on a plie, tonnage to the back on a plie, front, rond, find your arabesque. Pas de bray, step up to fifth as far as you can in front of you. Passe, that passe is very important. It's gonna feel like you're standing there for a long time. But if you can fix that passe first thing in the center, it's going to make life very much more easy when you get to do pirouettes and all of those things. Um, so that passe, exactly the same as we spoke about at the bar. Find the lower abs, lift the foot underneath you, keep the hips square. Everything on the other side and then we repeat it with those ones just off the floor. Really grow into that arabesque. Pas de bray, up to fifth, devil pay second. I hope that's nice and clear. Let's go for it. Um, again, I like this tune. So quasi, try to find, um, try to find your epomon here. So yes, we're very, very held in the abs, but try to find a performance um, in the upper body. So really show me your cheek here, and then really under the arm here, and then reaching far away from you for that one. Here we go. Good position. Remember no samba? 
again. I think we'll just do a tonju and a pirouette and then that will be it for the class portion. Um, so we will do two to the front, one transfer, two to the back, one transfer, two to the side, another step up to fifth, one passe and one pirouette. We will do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two to the side. Alternating, this time you're gonna go step up to fifth, on pass, one releve passe, and one pirouette. And you're on the other side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Same thing to the back. Six, seven, eight, two to the side, alternating. Step up to fifth. One releve passe and one turn. And we'll stop and then we'll do it again with a few small changes. So I hope that's clear. Um, nice and relaxed in the neck, nice and strong in the abs as always. Really strong supporting leg. The thing with the supporting leg as well is that it just makes life easier if you don't allow yourself to do this one because then it's very difficult to close in a proper fifth. If you're really working your supporting leg and you take your tanju and you're working this bit and your hip is still on top of your foot, it's very, very easy to close into a fifth on two feet. If you let yourself collapse a little bit, this one is, the fifth is a bit more challenging to achieve. So really, really useful to always keep that supporting leg switched on. And then it helps you when you want to change legs. Uh, two to the front, one transfer, two to the back, one transfer. Two to the side, PK fifth, one passe, one turn. What I want you to really think about in your transfers is that concertina plie that we spoke about at the bar, hips, knees, ankles, really efficient. And then, yes, we're keeping the foot on the floor in that tonju, but what would happen if I asked you to take it off the floor? What would you need to do with that supporting leg? Where would you need to put your weight? So really think about that when we're doing that this time. Hope the exercise is clear. Here we go, right and left. Two to the front. Jetés. So two to the front, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now go it, similarly to the frappe thing at the bar with the balance. I would rather you go for it and fall over than half go for it, not take the foot off the floor, adjust and then get there. Go for it straight away. Challenge yourself. What do you need to do to get to that position? Try. And if you don't hit it the first time, at least you'll know what happened. You'll discover which way. And it's really, really useful for all of your techniques to just go for things and discover what goes wrong instead of doing them a bit over carefully, you know? Um, and of course you need to be safe and all those things, but try not to climb your way up into there, adjust and then go. Just go for it straight away, pop. Um, and you might fall over like I did. Then we do to the side, one, two, three, four, a very tiny tombe pas de bray, tombe pas de bray. Set up the supporting leg for pirouette, one, two, three, four, and you take a pirouette, and you're on the other side. Single or double, whatever you feel, and whatever's appropriate for your space. So everything off the floor, instead of piquet to fifth, you have a little tombe pas de bray, and a chasse, and a pirouette from fourth. And that will be it. So once right and left, and that will be the end of the class portion for today. Here we go. Really challenge yourself on those transfers.
the end of our class portion for today. Mm. So, as this is a creative session as well, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about um, my creative process when I make a piece. Um, so, <laughs> I've written some notes so that I don't go on for too long about this. Uh, so I might have to refer to them at some point because I could talk forever <laughs> about it. Um, so today I'm just going to talk you through what I do because I am one of those choreographers who goes into the studio without any pre-prepared movement. Um, and I know sometimes this can sound a bit scary, but I promise you it's not. Um, so I'm just going to explain to you how I do that and how we generate movement when I'm making one of my pieces. So that's why I'm not going to set a phrase today. I'm just going to give you some ideas of things that you can try out at home. Uh, so as a choreographer, my approach is quite visual. I kind of need the movement in front of me to know exactly what I want to do with it. And that's been a way that I've found has been very um, successful for me over the years with different pieces. This is a way of working that I'm going to explain that if someone said to me, make a piece in one week, go with all your instincts, this is what I would do. Although of course there are other times when I'd want to challenge myself and find different ways of working, but this is something I've done over the years, which has been very fruitful. So I do a lot of planning before I go in. I make an overall structure. I listen to the music a lot, so I know the music inside out before I even go into the studio. I plan a structure. I do probably some preliminary casting. Um, but at the same time, you just never know what's gonna happen when you get into the studio and what people are gonna offer you and what they're going to show you so casting is never really set in stone for me um i would never go into the studio and say just improvise um i would always always give a very specific task so that's what i do i show up on the first day with my music my structure probably ideas for costumes and things like that so basically everything apart from the movement and i come in with some very very specific tasks. My favourite task to work with is giving a dancer three words and then I just let them think about those words and come up with a little phrase that is inspired by those words. But I would give them the words which would signpost them towards the kind of movement that I'm after. So what we tend to do, when I say we, I've usually got um, a rehearsal director with me, I've got someone assisting me who's kind of got their eye on developing all of this movement as well and um, and we really are working in collaboration with the dancers. So on day one we usually have a very busy productive studio, put on some music, give the dancers the task which I'll go into a bit more in a minute and just let them get on with it for a bit and then I go around and work with every single dancer, they show me what they've come up with and I help them edit it into something that we'll probably use in the piece or develop into a thing that we use in the piece. Maybe it's like, oh, that phrase would be great as one part of a duet. So I make a lot of notes and I do a lot of planning uh, based on what the dancer kind of offers me. What's really, really good about this is that, you know, if you put yourself in that position, if I ask you to make your own phrase and you go with it, you use the phrase, the, uh, the words, you do the task. Probably, I find what happens an awful lot, which is great, is that the dancer shows me movement that they like to do and movement that they look good doing. And that's really a winning combination for performance, isn't it? Um, so I get to see the dancer's strengths straight away. I get to see what they like to do. And also working with dancers in this way, um, and just as an aside, I don't dumb this down for young dancers. Uh, I've worked this way with dancers as young as eight years old and they've come up with some wonderfully creative things that I would never have thought of. So it's really a nice way to get to know dancers. And yeah, that was the last thing I was gonna say was you get to know people's personalities and it's just so lovely to work with people in that way. Um, so the kind of thing that I give people. So I give three words that are very um, 
that are very kind of movement based already. So for example, some of the words I like to use a lot are words like circle, um, arrow is a really, really good one, and things that are quite dynamic, like pick. So if you had circle, arrow, and pick, and you can use them in any order, as many times as you want, and in any way that you want. So this might be something you wanna think about at home, uh, how you would do this task. And I've had people interpret these words in all sorts of ways. Um, so for example, with circle, you could make a circle with your body, you could express a circle in space with your body, you could travel in a circle on the floor, you could turn, um, and you can go a little bit more abstract with the words as well. Like if I had circle, I think, what do I think about when I think of circle? I think of the sun. How would it feel to be dancing in the sun? So you can really, I really encourage dancers to be as creative as they want with those words. Arrow is very kinetic. It's, it suggests a, a way of traveling or you can make a very strong shape. And we have worked a lot with arrow in the past. Um, me and my various people that I've worked with. Pick is really dynamic. So yeah, I've made pieces where people are doing this constantly and that's from uh, generating movement with a word like pick. So you can, you can generate a lot of different movement. And personally for me, once I've got it in front of me, I know exactly what to do with it. But it's lovely to have the dancers make the first offering from the task. So I'm gonna not go on for too long, but one thing that dancers sometimes come to me and express their concern about is that they're not coming up with stuff that's good enough. And if you're ever in this position, I, I think I would really encourage you to um, just remind yourself that it's only a starting point and it's down to the choreographer to help you develop the phrase. So when I give a task, I'm not looking for a fully realized phrase. I'm looking for a starting point and I'm looking to understand what kind of a dancer and a performer you are. Um, there are no wrong answers in this kind of way of working. And I would also really encourage you to not be afraid of very, very simple movement. I, that's something I've heard before as well from people is that they think it's not fancy enough what they're doing. Ooh, my neighbors. Um, I think that simple, mu simple movement can be very, very beautiful. And it's also a really wonderful starting point for development. So if you're ever working creatively with a choreographer, don't worry if you feel like what you're doing is too simple, because I promise you it's not. Um, so I think that's something really, really important to remember. Don't judge yourself and try not to judge the process either. Um, it doesn't need to be super complicated. It's just a starting point. So that's the, that's the way I kind of go into it. So that's the beginning bit. And then once I've worked with all the dancers to refine and develop their phrases, we develop a sort of bank of movement and we start to understand what the language of the piece is. And then we can build duets, we can build trios, we can build group sections, and we can start to pencil these things into the structure that I've planned. Um, another thing I really like to do is have the dancers learn each other's phrases. Um, so it just means that the studio is really productive and really busy all the time. People have always got something to do. They've always got a phrase to learn. And um, it really works very well. And we start to build different sections based on all of this different movement. And just a quick note about duets. What I found is a really, really great way to build a duet, which you can also do uh, in your own time. This is something you can try out. Um, and if any of you have uh, people in your family or housemates who, who dance, it's, uh, it's quite a nice thing to try, is that you do your own phrases uh, next to each other and at a point of contact, you at a point where you might collide, then you explore that collision. And that's been a really wonderful way to make duets in the past. Um, instead of just putting the two people in front of me and thinking, what do I do with them? <laughs> it's really wonderful for them to go on their own individual journeys next to each other. And when there's a point of collision, we can explore what that collision is, if that makes sense. 
Um, when it comes to putting things to the music, there are many different ways of working with the music, right? You can start from the music and make steps based on what you hear in the music, and that's a very valid way of working. What I found is very interesting is doing this whole process that I've just described and then trying different things with different parts of the music. And then you discover kind of happy accidents that happen. And you discover different ways of working with the music that you might not have come up with had you just um, worked another way. So I really like working that way. And what I also like to do is have landmarks in the music where certain things need to happen. But between those landmarks, the dancers can explore their own musicality and they can try out different things. So it doesn't need to be exactly the same every time, actually. As long as the landmarks are in the right place, I really love to give the dancers the freedom to explore their own musicality. And then we put together the piece, which after you've done all of this work of building up the bank of material, learning each other's phrases, making duets, making trios, making group sections, um, the piece comes together very, very quickly because you've already got that whole language, you've got the whole world of the piece. And it does, sometimes it's a bit of a surprise, you know, one minute you've got loads and loads of phrases and no piece, and then the next day you've got a 10 minute piece. So it's really, um, it's been something that I've learned how to do over many years, and it's really been very, um, a very good way for me to work. Um, and yeah, I would say, I grew up not really realising that people, Craig was going to the studio without any movement planned. And it is a scary thing, both from the dancer's perspective and the choreographer's perspective, to walk into a studio with 30 people and not have anything to teach them. It's, you know, can be a bit scary. But if you've got those ways of generating movement that you know absolutely work, the exciting thing is that you never know what a dancer is gonna offer you. And often, the dancers come up with things that I could never have thought of but then my strength is in editing and shaping that into a piece so I suppose it's just um, yeah it's just embracing that kind of process so if you find yourself in a process like that I would just encourage you to really really throw yourself into it trust the choreographer to guide you and trust their vision try not to feel the weight of the responsibility of coming up with the steps because like I said, it's just down to you to make an offering, then the choreographer will do with that what they will. And there are no wrong answers. You will never look stupid. Um, I really encourage you to just throw yourself into it. Personally, I really, really love this way of working. I hope this explanation has been of interest. Um, and if you want to do for fun, you could try out that task that I talked about at home. So what was it, circle, arrow, pick? Think about how you would interpret those words, what sort of phrase you would make. Independent research is always going to be useful at some point in the future. So put that in your back pocket for some point in the future and have fun. Thank you so much for joining me and uh, hopefully see you all soon. OK. Thanks so much, Louise. Another fantastic class for the EMV Youth Dance course. Don't forget to tune in tomorrow at three o'clock for our final class of the week with Naomi Cook, who's going to be teaching you a creative contemporary class. We'll see you then.